Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. Last time, we went to the purely meta deck, but today we're going to look into what is arguably the weakest faction at this moment, Northern Realms, the blue faction in the game. Um, and we're going to specifically be looking at some of the new cards, the cards that were introduced last month, um, mainly Tessia de Vries, and uh, Charbonneau, I know I forgot about her first name for a minute. We'll talk about her. I mean, she's my avatar at the moment. We'll talk about her in a minute. So we're going to be working with a lot of mages. And we're going to be looking at the patience archetype as well. So let's head into the deck builder. So today's deck is called Spell Shocked. Uh, so of course, being a uh, pun on the word Shell Shocked, in which we use the Shield Wall ability to protect our patience engines. So as you can see, this is the deck list. As you can see, a lot of mages and a lot of patience cards and a little bit of control here and there is gonna work out immensely for us. So this is the entire list. You can find the list and the deck guide on the Play Gwent website in the link in the description down below as well. So don't forget to upvote that if you really like this deck. Other than that, um, I'm going to go through each and every single card one by one. So if you're not interested in that, you can skip to the example matches using the timeline down below. Otherwise, we'll go uh, through these cards and I'm going to explain as much as possible before we do exactly that. So first up is the Aretusa student. This card is new, but it's basically the other way around as the Ban Art student. So four power for four provision has patience and an order ability on the range row where you boost an allied unit by your patience value. So remember, patience increases the value of your ability at the end of every turn. So basically an automatic engine that doesn't give you direct value, but gives that value in one go if you use the order abilities. For example, with this card, every single turn, the boost will be increased by one. So after one turn, this will be a one point boost. After nine turns, this will be a nine point boost. So potentially very powerful card, because this is part of one of our biggest combos, as you'll see later on. And then of course, we have the Banard student. So the male version of this card, four power, four, four provisions as well. Same patience ability, but on the melee row instead of the range row and damage instead of boost. Otherwise, this is exactly the same. So uh, you can put that on the the melee row and just wait out until this value is spiraling out of control. Then we have the third bronze for provision mage, the Artusa Adept, that also starts at four power but increases her power by one, um, so boosting herself by one every time an allied unit's patience is triggered. So for example, if you have one of each student on the board, the Artusa Adept will boost herself by two every time those patiences are increased, which is at the end of every turn, of course. Um, this is very handy to give you a little bit of extra points on top of the patience value from your card. But of course, this is immediate. So you get those points immediately. So you're not looking at a, a big difference between you and your opponent's points. And now we have one practice makes perfect. This is a very interesting spell. Um, so it's a spell card where you shuffle an allied bronze and mage to your deck and then play a random bronze mage from your deck. Who's that unit you played by zero? but you increase the boost for one by one for each unit with patience that you played this game. So first off, it's a spell. It's going to be triggering our spell weavers. Second off, you can remove a locked or severely damaged unit, maybe one of the students that have already used their order ability from the board and then replace it with a fresh new random bronze mage from your deck. This could include the one that you just put in your deck. So basically resetting that unit, but it might just be something else. There's a lot of bronze allied unit, well, allied mages in this deck. So uh, you'll see what we get. So it's either going to be, um, we can actually check that here. So there's four options in this deck. So either, an, either a spell weaver, we'll talk about that in a minute. The Adept, the Banner student, or the Artusa student. Then of course the Centurion spell weaver, we just talked about that. Five provisions for your four power card that gives you an order ability where you damage a unit by one and has one charge to start with. But you gain an extra charge whenever you play a mage or a spell. So that has been changed quite recently to also include spells. So practice makes perfect basically triggers that twice because you play a spell and then a mage. But there's one more card that also triggers this potentially three times. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have Casting Contest, another spell where you boost an allied unit by five. And if it is a bronze card, you reset the order ability and give it zeal. Um, basically allowing you to reset one of the students 
if their patience value has increased by a lot already, you can basically just regain, like for example, an eight point boost and use that again immediately. Very, very powerful card. Don't underestimate this card because it's really, really good on those students. And we have two also Thunder just giving us another spell where we damage a unit by five, a little bit of control to remove engines from our opponent, uh, which is definitely something that our opponent is gonna try and do to us. Now we have Rune Word, there we go, the spell that allows you to create and pray, pray, play a Bronze Northern Realm Mage and give it a shield. So this pulls from the entire pool of Bronze Mages, uh, Northern Realms Mages that is. So it could be one of the four that we have in the deck, but there's a few other ones like the uh, Cursed One, I forgot about the name. So it could be the Banner Tutor, so boosting that up Mage by four. It could be the Sindrian Enchantress, so deploy uh, on the range row where you give uh, two points of vitality. Or it could be the Damned Sorceress, so five power and gives you another ability where you destroy a shield of a unit and boost yourself by two every two turns. So uh, those are the options. So especially with the newer cards, we got the um, Arethusa student. Uh, Add, just adds to the pool continuously. So now we have seven options for that. I think eight options. No, so that's seven options uh, possibly from that card. So it could definitely be not something from this list. Then of course we um, expect a lot of locks on our card. So Kutkodak is there to help. Six power and purifies the adjacent units when you place him on the board. So very handy to get some of your order abilities back into play if you lost them. And then we have the other way around. So we have Margarita Lo Antil, another human mage with six power and zeal on her order ability where she can lock an enemy unit so basically allowing you to take another unit out from the equation uh, regarding well assuming there's no uh, purify to get rid of that lock again then we have Letitia, that was her first name, Letitia Charbonneau, another human mage for 6 power for 7 provisions by now. Also has patience and a very interesting order ability. So if she's on the range row you can use her order ability to at the end of her turn, well our turn, um, increase the patience value of all allied units by 1. This means that this is one of the only cards that actually starts her patience value at one and not at zero. Um, there's also one more that starts at four. We'll talk about him in a minute. But uh, meaning that as the longer that Leticia is on the board, she's basically doubling up the patience value of your other cards uh, when you use her order ability. For example, if you wait five turns, she will increase all the other patience value cards by five. Uh, meaning that, for example, if you've already had a student on there for six, but because you played that first, that student will have an 11 patience value after Letitia has triggered her turn. The catch with this card is that this only happens at the end of this turn, even though you trigger the order ability manually. So if you trigger the order ability, it will only trigger at the end of the turn. So if for any reason the card would die before that, it's probably not going to happen. This ability would not trigger, but it will still be very good if you manage to keep that on the board. Just uh, the more patience engines you have at that point, the better, because uh, you can still resurrect them with a few of the other cards in this deck, as you'll see right now. So there we go. Necromancy is the following card. Spell that allows you to play a bronze unit from your graveyard and give it doomed. This does not give that card zeal, uh, so remember if you pull a student with a very high patience value, remember to shield it with shield wall because that's our ability that we uh, definitely use for that purpose. But other than that, this should definitely be used to grab those very powerful patience units. Then we're getting to the stronger cards already. So we skipped the eight provision slots because we don't have any. But uh, Yennefer Conjurer, five power from nine provisions, starts at zeal on her order ability where she deals one damage to the highest enemy units on the board. So if there's a lot of units with the same power and that is the highest points total on the board, you damage all of them by one. She can use this ability every single turn, so definitely give her a shield as well. She will be able to use it and she will give you the value for it in return. And we have Geralt Igni. This is basically um, one of the cards that you could definitely replace with something else, like for example, Dolomir if you want some more protection, 
or uh, the Bloody Baron if you want something else to use. You could even try and fit in Trust Telekinesis, uh, but you'll have to shuffle around some of the other provisions to use this. But I like Geralt Igni in this spot. Two power, 10 provisions, and on deploy you destroy the highest power units on an enemy row with a total of 35 or more. But if you haven't done anything else on initiative, if this is the first action this turn, you destroy the highest power units on an enemy row with a total of 20 or more power instead. Um, basically allowing you to clear rows with the same power. So for example, the Whisperers from the previous video, if there's nothing else on that row, you can destroy an entire row of Whisperers in one go with Geralt Igni. Uh, other than that, this basically functions as our, as our tall removal card, because uh, we don't really have another option for that. We can deal a lot of damage, um, especially with the Banard students, if they get high enough, but it's not guaranteed, and even the Spellweavers just have to yeah, just need a bit of time to get going. So uh, Geralt Igni is there to take out a big unit if you really need to. Then we have Queen Adalia, another, uh, well, not a mage, sadly, because I feel like she should be a mage, but I don't think she had any magical powers, so it kind of makes sense. So this is basically the great, great grandmother of Siri. Um, starts at three power for 10 provisions and on deploy you spawn and play a base copy of a bronze northern realms unit from your hands and then give it a shield. So basically you need to be careful that you have a bronze unit in your hand for this card to work because otherwise you brick it and it's only three points. But other than that you can just uh, duplicate any of the students or of course the spell weavers and giving it a shield automatically gives it a, bit, a bit of protection so it survives to the next turn. Then we have Shani, there we go, we have our second option to resurrect one of the students. So Shani, 5 power for 10 provisions, but that's not really what counts here. She has an order ability that also has zeal, where you summon a bronze human unit from your graveyard to this row and give it doomed. All our bronze units are human, so you can resurrect any card you played beforehand and uh, give it doomed. Definitely gonna be using that on the students, especially the very high patience valued students. And she has a cooldown of seven, which mostly means that we're not gonna see her until, uh, yeah, we're only gonna be using her once uh, in most cases, cause that seven is just way too high. And we don't have any cards to reduce that, so we just care about the base ability. And that, of course, the legendary card from this expansion pack, the Saya de Vries. Six power for 10 provisions and on deploy, of course, she's also a mage. On deploy, at the end of this turn, we set the order of all allied mages that use their order during this turn. This card can be immensely powerful if set up correctly. So if you place, for example, uh, Leticia, uh, a couple of students, and then Gerhard, we'll be talking about him in a minute, on the board, use all of their order abilities in the second to last turn that you have, then play Tisaya, she will actually reset all those order abilities. So next turn you'll have all of them again. Remember, if you have a student with something like a 10 plus um, patient value, then that student alone will be enough to give you the value on Tisaya. Even though you could go even further, because um, I'm actually going to go to Gerhard now as well. So Gerhard of L, 7 power for 11 provisions, also a mage of course, has patience and creates and plays a provision spell when you use his order ability. The patience value starts at 4, so you play a 4 provision spell if you want to do that immediately. Or if you wait a turn, this actually goes to a 5 provision spell. Casting Contest is a 5 provision spell. So if you use Gerhard... Get Casting Contest on one of the students that you also just used, uh, for example, with one that does 10 point, a 10 point boost. You reset that immediately. So Gerhard at that point is 15 plus 7 is 22 points. Do that again with the Saya and you get another 15 points. Another interesting thing with Gerhard is, of course, he can also get Runeward out uh, at 6 provisions. Um, so that is going to be another spell and another mage, so potentially also increasing the uh, charges on your spell weavers. And then of course we also have Oneromancy, which is a spell on its own, the echo card where you play any card from your deck and you can do that twice, so nothing much more to say about that, just a very good tutor card. Our stratagem of course is Engineering Solution, where you boost an allied unit by 4 and give it a shield, some extra protection is always handy. And then our leader ability is Shield Ball, where we get 3 charges to boost an allied unit by two and give it a shield. It is very necessary that we have this just to protect our patience engines um, 
from the damage that might be incoming. So there we go, that's the deck. Um, let's head into the example matches to see how powerful this deck can actually be. And the first matchup is against a Battle Trance deck. That's going to be interesting because that might actually give us the chance to use our engines here. We should get a pretty good start. I like to be varied at the start, so casting contest is not going to help that much just yet. We get a double rune word. And that is really good. Uh, Maldalia can stay. I think this is a pretty good hand. You can start with that and see what happens. Uh, although I do like another patience engine because I have Letitia as well. Let's get rid of rune words. Uh, although, no, I can get rid of the Artusa. That we got Margarita. Okay. Um, let's start off by using the Banard student and protecting him with a shield. So that's going to block our opponent from damaging it too much. Of course, he can still uh, lock it, but um, okay, Raiding Fleet is just going to give us some bleeding. That is absolutely fine. I'm then going to put down Letitia. Uh, Letitia is just going to boost the Banard student. Well, I guess we'll see. Let's try it like this and set it up like this as well. So now Letitia and the Banard student are going to increase their patience value. So the Banard student is at two right now, Letitia as well. So they're going to stay at the same point. We get hit with, yeah, the Giga Scorpion decoction. That was to be expected. I could have protected her with a shield, but I think at this point it's not that important. Let's start with Queen at, well start. Let's put Queen Adalia on the field and get another Spellweaver down. So that one is protected by a shield. And from now on we'll get some damage potential in hand as well. The idea of the students is that we don't use them um, as long as we don't need to use them. So I'm gonna actually put down Runeward now. A rune word gets us another Sentry and Spellweaver, which is fair enough. And that's going to trigger uh, three charges on the Spellweaver. I could use the Banard student now to take out the Armor Track card, but it's not going to be that useful right now. And then we get the Spell Blood Priest, but the Spell Blood Priest is definitely going to die. Because I could actually put down another rune word. Um, or I could lock the um, the Hermit there. But let's just do another rune word. That's going to be... Ooh, tempting to put the Aretusa student down instead. But the amount of Spellweavers we have now is just better. Um, so that gives us 8 charges on the Spellweaver. Um, I'm just going to destroy the Priest here. So there we go, using all the charges we have to take down the priest. Uh, I don't need to hit the hermit right now because I can't kill it. I mean, I could with the Bernard student, which is at four at the moment and now at five. So then we get the Hafru Singer, which is also a very good engine card. Um, I could go with Oneromancy, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to pull with Oneromancy here. I could do Casting Contest. Just to get it out. Um, I only have one Patience Engine, so I think Casting Contest will be the most interesting one. Let's put down another Spell Weaver, so that's um, four of them. And now I can just take out the Hafru Singer, because that's basically the biggest threat at the moment. And again, I'm going to keep the um, Banard student alive. This guy is actually not going to trigger anymore. Um, because he's not damaged, because he only does that when he's damaged. And then we get Oneromancy, which is exactly what we're going to do. Ooh. And we get Melusine, which is good, because uh, that's why Geralt is actually here. Um, I can't take her out completely, because they can definitely resurrect her. But I think with Oneromancy, I'll have enough charges on the Spellweavers to take out the Hermit now regardless. Uh, so I can do this. And I forgot to actually use the Bernard student's ability first. Um, which means that I'm just going to pull the... Yeah, the, the next Sentry and Spellweaver, I think. Although I could do Alzu's Thunder as well. This con casting contest is useless now. Uh, so I'll just use the Sentry and Spellweaver. There we go. There we go. And then we can use that to actually kill Melusine. I'm actually going to kill Melusine with that. So it's not here anymore on the board. We really want to clear that out. 
Um, let's see, but we still have three charges over here, and I don't really need them. No, there we go. Their biggest engine is gone, so there we go. They passed. I was expecting something like that. So there we go. Five spell weavers on the board. Um, this is more effective than I've seen so far. There we go. And there we go. So they can definitely resurrect Melusine in the next round, but we're going to try and block that as much as possible. And we still have uh, Geralt Igni to just clear that out completely. Good, good duck is most likely going to be useless. I don't think our opponent has locks in a deck like that. So Tissaia is definitely good, and then the Arethusa Adept can go as well. We can get another Arethusa student. We still also have all of our shield walls, so that's really good. So I want to get as long as around as possible. So I'm going to get rid of... Um, yeah, I'm just going to end it there. And then we get a resurrection on the priest, meaning that that priest is actually gone from the game now. Because it's doomed and then removed after this round so you'll see it like evaporate more fancily than it just goes to the graveyard there it goes another Aretusa adapts and could kodak again i'm gonna get rid of could kodak he's really not gonna be useful um the Aretusa student i only played two patience engines just yet so i think practice makes perfect can go and we get necromancy so that's good that means we can resurrect that um the one that we had, the Banard student, that is now at 8, remember that. Um, and we still have Oneiromancy to pull something else. I'm probably going to pull Yennefer Kutcher, although with the, um, the way our opponent works, I'll probably not be able to. So let's see. Um, let's start slow with an Aretusa student, and I can definitely shield wall it. There we go. Then I can put the second one down and put the Aretusa Adept right next to it. Gonna take it slow. And our opponents will go with Gedanit. But I think we actually have the upper hand here. Because we could go for Necromancy next. Yeah, let's put Necromancy and put that Banard student at the top and also protect it. So his patience value will increase as well, and right now he's at 9. So 9 damage is enough to actually kill the defender there. And then we got Oneromancy, and that's Karate Heatwave on the student, sadly. Okay. So that banishes it from the game as well. Um, so I'm just going to put another Aretusa student down. I'm not going to protect that one, because um, I don't really need to. And we get the Crow Clan Preacher again, and that's going to give them a lot of points. So that's six points on that. And now we can put down the Aretusa Adept, which will continuously gain points from the Patience value. I don't have another Patience Engine here. So the only thing that I have is the, um, the Sintrian Spellweaver, which is probably the best thing I can do at this moment. I could put down Gerhard uh, first to get some more patience value and I'll protect him. So there we go. Let's protect him. And then we get the Draco Turtle and we know Melusine is also coming. So if I can time this uh, Igni very well, that would be really cool. Um, but first things first, let's use... I could actually just use Oneiromancy to get another student out. Would that be more points? I don't actually know because I only have two more... Mages, I think that might actually be better. Yennefer Contra is going to be useless here. Uh, so I think it's either the Banard student or the Arthusa Adept, but I think the Banard student is going to be better. So there we go. So that gives us four engines on the board. That will be Melusine. Melusine is over there, which is not the best. And that gives us a really awkward line at the moment. Uh, but this row is actually now um, 35 points, so I can use Geralt whenever I want. I can wait one more turn um, and lock something. But I think it's probably better off just waiting with the lock. So, yeah, let's use the Arethusa student, the Arethusa student the Banard student in the back, and then Gerhard of L, and we get verification. 
Uh, or just damage all enemy units by one. That's also a spell. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. And then we play Tissaia. There we go. And now Tissaia will all increase those cards again. They don't increase in patience value, actually. I kind of missed that. That was my mistake. So we get Rain on that row. And then we get Bride of the Sea. And that's Murdrome. Ooh. And that's another Murdrome on... What is that going to be? Okay, the priest over there. Is that going to wrap around? So now we have 21. The next one is going to be 2018. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to have to igni that. I don't actually know what the 8 provision, the 7 provision slot will get me. Uh, but let's do igni now. Um, there we go. Because it's not going to get to a better point, I think. And we'll let the patience increase one more time. I actually don't know what the 8 provision slot for spell, uh, the 7 provision slots for spells does. I think we also have, um, we also have the resurrection, right? The necromancy. Um, so this, let's use this first. Gerhard of Val, we get necromancy or dead man's tongue. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. That man's tongue might actually be good. So is that cards or units? Banish a card from your deck. If the banished card was a bronze, banish another bronze card from your deck. Okay, so that is going to be better. So that man's tongue. Play that. Let's get rid of all Zustender. And all Zustender. And then boost the Banard student. Play this and lock whatever the... Fuck, I want, I don't really care. Let's hit that with a biggie. Let's uh, boost something and let's boost something. But we just won this. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the points anymore, but that was really close. Look at that. Whew. Yeah, I, did, I was kind of running out of time at the very end. So the Dead Man's Tongue actually saved us there because that was 10 points and the Resurrection wouldn't have gotten us that high. So that was really, really close. But the 7 provision... That man's tongue actually saved our ass. That was very nice. And the next one is imprisonment. So that is going to probably hurt because our opponent has a lot of ways to take out those uh, units, those patience units. But we have good conduct to start with, which is good. Um, we have a spell weaver to start with too. But I don't want to actually have spell weavers at this point. Um, and I don't want to have practice makes perfect, which is going to hurt. Okay. I think I'm going to play Adalia first through Oneromancy. Because I really want to get a double um, Aretusa student on the board. Just to show off that combo. This is actually really weird that they start with that. Because that means they, the damage just doesn't go anywhere. Um, so let's use Oneromancy on Adalia. Where is she? There she is. There we go. Adalia on the Aretusa student and put her on the range row, giving us our first engine. Now, if this is a tactics deck, then of course they have the, um, what's it called? The thing that removes the shield and then does four damage. The, the tourney joust, tourney joust, that's it. Um, so tourney joust could take that out in one go, but it doesn't look like they have it. Although for card might actually do this. No, that's that man's stone. Okay. So it's a thinning deck. Don't really care too much about that then. They get a spy on Adalia, which won't help them in the slightest because Adalia is a Northern Realms unit and also requires you to copy a bronze Northern Realms unit from your hand, so they don't have any use for that. Let's put another student down. We have two of those now. If they both get locked, I have Kutkodak. And again, we get the Mage Torturer putting some uh, spying on our students. And then we can actually just put the Aratusa Adept over there. And she will boost herself by two at the end of every turn because of the two students we have on the board. That one gets locked. Should have maybe put that right next to uh, the other ones. But I'm just trying to play out my, uh, my Patience Engines here. So that's just fine. I'm not going to waste Good Godark on that just yet. I feel like there might be a look at a more crucial point that might hurt me more. 
Um, and then we got a battering ram. Battering ram is three damage, so I do want to take that out with Alzur's Thunder. Like this, we still have the two boosts over here, so we definitely have ways of getting back into the game if we need to. But we get Cantarella now, a blind Cantarella on an Alzu Stunner that's going to take out the student. And that is a point for me to stop because I don't want to have them use Cantarella twice. So let's just pass. We have a 5 point Aratusa student right now, which is better than nothing, I suppose. But yeah, the first round goes to our opponent. Which is something that actually happens a lot in Northern Realms. You're kind of basically building up your own units. We get Geralt Igni there. We have a lot of gold cards in hand. Which is not ideal. I'm gonna get rid of Necromancy. It's not that useful right now and casting contest isn't either. So let's get rid of that and we get practice mix perfect. Okay. Even practice mix perfect is basically useless at this point. So I'm gonna have to go for rune words. Or maybe on Necromancy. I'm gonna use rune words. So rune word into another Aratusa student, which gives us another patience unit that we used. Uh, so that increases practice makes perfect as well. So that is now at three. Um, so let's end that turn. And then we, yeah, we basically, we could pull something else away. Uh, but I don't think it's useful because our hand is just really good at the moment. So let's just pass. Okay, so imprisonment, that might mean masquerade ball, which means that a lot of our units are in danger of getting destroyed, getting hit with something nasty. But we can dish out as well as we get it. So uh, let's get rid of the Banard student. Sintrian Spellweaver. Although I could have actually used that Banard student. I might have been a bit too quick on the draw there. Let's get rid of that. Runeward is actually better. Practice makes perfect. Might be good to get rid of a locked one. Um, so maybe Necromancy... What do we still have? Oh, wait, wait, wait. What do we still have? I think we still have Yennefer Conjurer, right? Yeah. And Letitia Charbonneau. So I think Necromancy can go and we get Letitia. Okay. So let's put Letitia down first and shield wall her. So I know she can get hit by a lock. But if they use imprisonment on that, they waste the three damage. So the biggest patience engine we have right now is that 5 point boost Aratusa student. And our opponent is playing a card, so that's Joachim. On to the Mage Assassin, so that was a little bit sad, and now we get the lock on the Tisha. Fair enough. We can actually play Runeward now, and we get another Aratusa student. I'm actually gonna go for the boosts, I think. So yeah, let's put the Aratusa student down over here. She immediately gets a shield. Do I actually need to get rid of a bronze mage? Yeah, we need to get rid of a bronze mage. We get spying on the student again, which I think we already had. But never mind. Uh, we can put Shani down now, although I think, yeah, we might, we might just do that. So let's put Shani down, play that five points. Yeah, that five points. Point Aratusa student and shield wall her. So there we go. That resurrects that one. And we get more and more patient. Pink. Patience. Patience is a hard word. Patience is a really hard word. We also have Oneiromancy left, so we're definitely going to be using that. We get Artorius Vigo with another Mage Torture. On Shani. So that's actually really interesting because Shani can now be. Uh, used with Arto, which is probably what they're aiming for. I should probably play Yennefer Conjurer now. I'm gonna put Yennefer Conjurer, although no, they, they can invocate that and I don't want them to... I don't want them to invocate Yennefer Conjurer because it's gonna help them more than it's gonna block them from me. I actually have two Patience Engines on the board right now. So I'm just gonna play the Aratusa Adept from here. So let's put that over there, and she's going to continuously boost herself. There we go. Now we get Yennefer's Invocation on that student. Okay, that's fine, because I can actually take that out still. I don't really have a good card to lock. And I, of course, want to use that lock on something 
interesting. So let's just put Gerhard over here right now, so he can start boosting himself. Uh, I could use the final shield on him, but that's just going to boost him higher, and I don't think that's worth it, so let's just do this. If they lock Gerhard, or poison him, or whatever, I can actually just use Kudkodak now. Opponent is deciding, they're going with Bratens and they're gonna be copying, I'm assuming, the student. Yeah, the Artusa student. I can actually lock that, although I know they're gonna go for Sha- but Shani, yeah, they're not gonna be able to do anything with, so let's just lock the student over there. And let the patience just keep going. I don't know what I'm waiting for, I feel like I was expecting another lock, but it's not coming. So Shani will resurrect, yeah, another uh, assimilate unit. Um, I can actually could Kodak Letitia now. I'm actually gonna do that. So let's just could Kodak Letitia. Um, and that gives us three patience engines again. We're behind a little bit, but remem remember that all of those cards still have abilities. And I'm gonna use all three of them in a minute. This is going to be interesting. It depends on how many counter options our opponent still has, but I don't think they have any locks left. They would have used it already, I think. We get Coup de Grasse, and that's going to go on to Joachim. If they get lucky, they might get another lock here, but they don't. And remember, I still have Igni as well, so... At a certain point, they'll be in trouble. Um, so now... This is... Whew. So now I need to use all my other abilities. So I'm going to use Letitia first. Um, the Aretuza Adept can actually go on to uh, whatever ones of the spying ones here. Um, then I can use Gerhard of L to actually... Oh, that's the same decision again. What do I necromancy here? I have two Aretuza students left. Or... That man's tongue. I'm gonna necromancy here. Um, necromancy onto the biggest Aretusa student over here. She doesn't get zeal. Uh, and that was the final one. So there we go. Let's put that down and then give the Aretusa student here something as well. And her patience will also increase, by the way. Um, so now I got double poison on the field, though. So I'm gonna have to be careful about that. But remember, if that one unit, this one, still goes for assimilate. I have two 12s on that row. So that's Menno into Experimental Remedy into another Arthusa student. So there we go. That's what I was waiting for. So Geralt Igni on that back row. So there we go. Uh, and then I'm going to use the Tisha one more time. I can't actually use Caradavel at the moment because his... Uh, yeah, his patience went that high that I can't actually use his ability anymore. So let's just use Letitia Sarbonneau and then end the turn. Because now I think Gerhard is at 16. Yeah, that's going to be ridiculous. But now these two, as you can see, they're at 15 and 12. And I can still resurrect another, uh, another card with Shani if they don't destroy that uh, Shani now. This is insane. I love this deck so much. That just the amount of points on those cards is just incredible. So our opponent is now just using another card. There we go, Redanian Elite. That's just a seven point card with all the assimilate triggers. Um, but now I can actually use Shani to resurrect. Oh, I can still resurrect that. That is fine, it's just another four points. Um, and I can actually use that card, because this card is now useless actually, I can use this on the Aretusa Adept, put that one over here, and then boost um, Geralt, uh, no, I'm gonna boost Letitia by 12, and then the Aretusa student over here by 15. 114 points and another two on top of that, because I have uh, two of them. Ah, they might actually play Igni now. No, they play Geralt of Hell. Which is actually going to trigger Assimilate again. That is actually cool, but it's just not enough. 105, 160, that was amazing. That was really nice. That was a really cool game. Yeah, GG to you, man. That was incredible.
So as you might have noticed, this deck is actually pretty good. The only thing that you're really dependent on is of course your patience engines. If you lose those, um, then you're basically out of the game. You might actually lose. There's a lot of them in this, this deck, so you might still get the upper hand, but just a few car key cards. If you lose those, then it's basically game over. Um, but I think that's mainly the reason why it's not a meta deck. Uh, you really rely on the fact that your opponent doesn't have a lot and a lot of removal. So the only really big counter to this deck is line pockets because that can just keep piling and piling on the damage uh, while basically anything else really can't. Maybe siege, but even siege um, might actually come up short a little bit on the damage front. So this is a very, very good deck. Um, try that for yourself. The link is in the description down below. I'm really curious what you think of it, um, what the tips are that you can give me. I didn't go for the meme version because there's a meme version where you actually go for the Arch Griffin. Where is it? So this thing and just put all the student boosts on the Arch Griffin in the first round and then just keep that card because it shuffles back into your deck uh, and keeps the boosts. But even without that, uh, Igni does really have value. You can set Igni up really well with Yennefer Conjurer and the Spellweavers, which is why I included it. It's not just a random inclusion in this deck, it just really fits uh, fits really well with all the damage you can do with the Spellweavers and Yennefer Conjurer, putting everything equal. Um, but other, if you don't really like Igni, there's plenty of other uh, options for that. If you want to go for some crowd control, because you don't really have a lot of units yourself, you can use Yennefer of Vankerberg, um, which is also another mage, of course. And if you just slightly adjust, uh, for example, if you remove one of the Alzu Stunders uh, and swap it out for a 4 provision card, then you can also include uh, Tristelekinesis, which is the only card that can actually trigger the Spellweavers three times. Um, and possibly even four times, of course, with Onairomancy. If you pull Tristelekinesis with Onairomancy, the spell is one, then Tristelekinesis is a mage. Uh, also counts if you pull Runeworth with Triss her ability, then that's the third one, that's the spell, and then you play another mage with Runeworth, which is the fourth one. So four charges on all those spell weavers, which could be very, very powerful. And it, I mean, I'm selling it to myself here, but uh, yeah, it sounds like a really good option if you want to change it up. So that would be, I actually can show you that really quickly. So remove Geralt Igni. Put Triss in, and I have one provision change, so you can remove Alzu Stunder and go down a little bit, and we can swap that out for a mm, Pact would actually muddle the waters a little bit. Actually, a, mer a Spores wouldn't be that bad, or Winch, but Winch, the only cooldown card we have is um, Yennefer Conjurer and Shani. Although Winch might actually be pretty good. It is not a spell though, and it does muddle the waters of Triska Telekinesis as well. Uh, so I do want to avoid putting another special card in there. Um, so maybe another Practice Makes Perfect would work, or of course one of the other Bronze Mages that we haven't used, um, like for example the Banner Tutor for six, or the, um, yeah, the Centurion Enchanters wouldn't be actually that useful. Because uh, you could actually just include a get many Revenant. Um, yeah, that would actually be the better option since those actually got the provision buff to four. Um, so just a, a very nice addition there. So that this is what that deck could also look like. Um, but I'm actually going to stay with the Igni version just because it feels like a little bit better. Because otherwise you don't really have a tall removal card. Uh, and it just works a little bit better that way. So uh, let me know what you think. And with that, we've arrived at the end of this episode again. Sadly, I know, sadly. But uh, this has been a really cool deck. I really like the Spell Shock deck. Um, Northern Realms is stronger than most people give it credit for. So the main tactic here is just to keep building up one of those Patience Engines in the first round and then just resurrect it in the second round and maybe even keep boosting it. Try to keep it alive, of course, which is the most important part. Part, and then reset, double or triple use those ability with casting contest um, and of course Desire the Vries. Um, yeah, just a very, very cool combo there with the new legendary card of Northern Realms. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this deck, if you have any tips to improve, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. And uh, other than that, um, yeah, really thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.